Do you and your friends enjoy drafting? Have you played Cube on Magic Online or Arena, such as the MTGO Holiday Vintage Cube or the Cultic Cube by yours truly? Do you have the itch to assemble a cube of your own, but aren't sure how to begin? I get it. When I first set out to build a cube, I felt daunted and a bit overwhelmed. Today we're going to cut through to the fundamentals and give you a quick, straightforward template for building a cube. Welcome to Cultic Cube, where we cube religiously. We make you better at cube and make your cube better. Today we'll go over what a cube is, how to start building one, and what the rough floor plan of a cube might look like, which you can furnish according to your taste. A cube is a custom set of magic cards designed with limited play in mind. There's limitless variety available within that space. Many people think of cube as a singleton format of at least 360 cards, carefully numerically balanced with the same number of cards in each color and so on. A cube certainly can be some or all of these things, but it need not be. What we will sketch out today is the start of a traditional cube, but rules are made to be broken, suggestions are made to be ignored, and cubes should be made personal and idiosyncratic. Please don't feel fettered by this guide. Let's get into how to start assembling a cube, and then move on to the content of that cube. First, do not feel as if your first cube effort needs to be perfect. We're going to bang together a great start, but I guarantee that you will find things you want to tinker with as you play your cube. That's the fun of cube design. Second, don't worry that a cube need be expensive. Your goal is to create an awesome limited environment which has nothing whatsoever to do with the price of cardboard. So grab a bunch of cards. This can be draft chaff, remnants of commander decks of yore, the contents of a booster box, and let's get to work. Pull out a swath of cards that are fun to play. Get a bunch of them. A hundred in each color? More? You will winnow the list later, but for now you are in brainstorming mode. You need not have a strong thematic focus for the cube now, or indeed ever. But a tip is that the more cards you pick from similar pools, such as focused commander decks, or cards from similar moments in magic history, the more natural synergies will automatically exist in the environment. I began building my first cube from a box of draft chaff, much of which came from Innistrad block, as that is what I had most drafted. Perhaps 50% of that cube came from Innistrad. Thus Watsi had already done an enormous amount of heavy lifting on my behalf, making various pieces play nicely together. You don't have to start a list from scratch if you don't want to, of course. In the video description, find links to some budget cubes that might provide inspiration. Since you're watching this, though, it's likely that you, like me, have a pile of magic cards. I encourage you to try your hand at assembling a list. So we'll look at the structure of the list in a moment. But first a word about how to keep track of your burgeoning project when the hundreds of cards spread out on the kitchen table are beginning to impede your ability to eat dinner. For years, cube designers used spreadsheets, and indeed some still do. It's the year 2021. Allow me to strongly recommend that you host your cube on a dedicated cube website. I believe that the Cube Cobra website, which is helmed by my friend Gwen Decker, is the best option available today. It is free and open source, and it boasts an active and responsive development team. The site makes tinkering with your list, mock drafting it, and generating reams of analytics trivially easy. Now on to the big question. What does our cube look like? The following skeleton of a cube should not be taken as prescriptive. In fact, for some it might be limiting. Recall that cube is really and truly whatever you want it to be. But I offer the following as an entry point to traditional cube design and as a survey of some of the fundamental considerations when designing a cube. First, aim for a cube of 360 cards. This is the minimum number of cards that allow the cube to be drafted by eight people who each receive three packs of 15 cards. I would not go bigger at first, as the larger the cube, the harder it is to calibrate archetypes, players' access to resources, and so on. But by all means, expand later if you like. I personally really like 450. Second, let's divide that pile of cards into functional categories. The eight typical divisions are the five single-color Wooburg sections, colorless cards, multicolor cards, and lands. 
I'd like to start by talking about fixing lands, whose importance is often underappreciated. In cube draft, as in retail draft, players typically have free access to basic lands from a land station. Any special lands must be drafted, and thus appear in the cube list. People often recommend making 10% of the cube fixing lands, but I think that's insufficient. I advise devoting closer to 15% of the cube to fixing. Help ensure that your players get to play magic. So let's set aside 50 slots for fixing lands. If you don't have a million tundras, don't stress it. You can populate the land section with guild gates or whatever you like, and don't be afraid to break singleton. Next, let's talk about multicolored cards. I recommend limiting this section to 20 cards. This may sound like a conservative number, especially to those with an EDH background, where one celebrates the admixture of the color pie. For those interested, I have a video on the topic of gold section design. But in brief, gold cards can be played by a smaller number of decks than single color cards. And they are harder to cast even in decks that can play them. Especially challenging are gold cards that require more than two colors. When there are eight players at a table, there is no guarantee that there will be, say, a Rakdos player. And the odds are lower still that there will be a Mardu player. I urge you to restrict the number of gold cards, and to strive to put only the most unique effects in your gold section. Maelstrom Pulse, Vindicate, Dreadbore, Detention Sphere, Lightning Helix are all good cards, but their rate and their additional upsides do not, for me, outweigh the superior castability of single color equivalents, such as Doomblade, Oblivion Ring, or Lightning Bolt. Permit me to recommend 30 colorless spells. One can go in a thousand different directions with this section, of course. One category that bears careful thought is Mana Rocks. Soul Ring is, it is widely acknowledged, a broken magic card in the context of Cube. Two CMC Mana Rocks are also extremely good. The greater the density of cheap, colorless acceleration and fixing that is available, the less incentive players will have to look to green for these effects, and the better control decks will tend to be. I do not suggest that you eschew Mana Rocks entirely, but I would keep an eye on these as your design develops. Watch my video on the topic as well if you like. At last we turn to the meat and potatoes of the cube, the single color sections. Put 50 cards in each of these five columns. A few tips here. The easiest starting point is to evenly divide each section between creatures and non-creature spells, such as instants, sorceries, enchantments, planeswalkers. If you want to get a bit fancier, a survey of official sets, and thus of retail limited environments, finds that green tends to have the most creatures, followed by white, black, red, and then blue. Thus you might consider running, say, 35 green creatures and 15 other spells, and flip that ratio for blue. Allow me to interject that I have a Patreon that supports the work of this channel. Patrons get all sorts of cool perks at different levels, such as access to beautifully formatted versions of my video essays, which may be useful reference material. I also have affiliate relationships with TCG Player, Inked Gaming, and Amazon. Thanks for your support. An important consideration in the single color sections is Mana Curve. I am sure that you know how to sculpt a great curve for a deck, one that is heavy on cheap cards and light on the expensive. Apply that notion to your cube design as well. As an initial heuristic, you can extrapolate your cube curve from a retail limited deck curve. As you continue to refine your environment, you will likely find that you want your cube to have proportionately more cards at the bottom of the curve than the retail limited deck will run, fewer cards through the middle of the curve, and perhaps a bit more on the high end. Everyone at the table needs a density of inexpensive cards so you very much want these to be available to players, even through the vagaries of pack distribution. Thus, you should prioritize cheap spells in your cube design. The chart here compares the average mana curve of about 100 successful limited decks from Grand Prix and Pro Tours in 2018-20 to, to the mana curves in the single color sections of four legacy and vintage cube environments. This chart compares apples to oranges, but I hope that this normalization gives some sense of how a cube curve might be both similar to and different from a retail limited deck curve. Let's see where that leaves us. 50 cards in each Wooburg section, 50 fixing lands, 30 colorless cards, and 20 gold cards, 
amounts to 350 cards. Thus, we have 10 flex cards to allocate as you see fit. Add two more cards to each single color section. Add five utility lands and five colorless cards. Add one more card in each guild pair. Whatever fits your goals. Also, I have been speaking about each of these sections as numerically balanced for the sake of convenience. If you have 55 blue cards and 45 white cards, that's totally fine. No one at your draft table will know. We are almost done with our cube. Allow me to bring up a couple of large scale issues that you might mull over, but that I don't want to drill down into here. First, what archetypes do you want? And how will you distribute support for them throughout the environment? How fast do you want the format to be? What power level do you want the environment to reside at? And how comfortable are you with power spikes and potentially unfair strategies? You need just a couple last things to make your cube ship shape and ready to play. Your players will need basic lands. I advise you to pack 40 of each type. Consider sleeving your cube, or indeed double sleeving it. And if you do, remember that you need to sleeve up all those basic lands as well. Bring along plenty of dice, ideally a few sets of d6s of different colors. You may want tokens, but if you are happy going minimalist for now, just use dice. Finally, you need to put your cube in something. We have increasing options in this regard, but honestly, for the moment, I'd stick the cube in a big BCW cardboard box, like those in which your LGS stores cards, and call it a day. It will cost you a dollar or two, and you can research other options later. That's it, friends. You have a cube. Now go find some people to play it with, or just sit down with your partner or sibling or friend and play some sealed or grid draft. See what you like and what you dislike and start tinkering. Do you have any cube design tips? Share them in the comments below. Let's keep hanging out and chatting cube.